Hey everyone, Fred here, AF Math and Engineering. We are going to be covering a slightly new topic for you probably. This isn't anything that you'd be doing in uh, you know, physics or anything like that. This is kind of specific to uh, civil engineering or maybe you do a little bit of it mechanical or aerospace for sure. Aerospace engineering you'd be doing uh, a lot of trusses and that kind of stuff. But yeah, this is kind of engineering specific stuff now that we're getting into. So it's kind of cool. It's really interesting. We're starting to practice, you know, what we'll be what we'll be studying, what we'll be doing for a living, which is which is really cool, I think. So uh, this is a bit of an exciting uh, time in the course. And let's uh, let's take a look at what we got in the diagram, and let's take a look at what the question is asking us. Okay, and then we'll start to solve it. So this is going to be a little bit of a longer question, but hopefully we can just kind of blaze through it. Okay. So we're going to do this in maybe two videos. Okay. So as you can see, at uh, this is one thing I just wanted to point out: the roller at C is on an angle here. Okay, it's on an angle and. The, there's a, there's an angle here, all right, of phi. Okay, so in this, in the first question, we're just going to say that phi is zero. Okay, so we're going to assume that this is just a flat, um, a flat roller here. Okay, or it's like a pinned roller. Uh, however, um, in in subsequent videos, okay, what we're going to, or in the next video, what we're going to assume is that there is an angle. Okay, and that makes the question a little bit trickier. Okay, so we'll we'll solve it first with no angle, just so you can get an idea of how solving for trusses works. Okay, and this is also an introduction to internal forces. Okay, so uh, the the internal force within the each member of the truss is what we're going to be solving for. Okay. So let's take a look at the question. So it asks us to determine the force in, in each member, okay, so the internal force of each member of the truss and state if the member is in compression or tension, all right? So we have a, a truss here, A, B, C, D, there's two supports here, okay, and we have an external force here in red and that's, that's pretty much it, all right? So with that being said, let's get started. Now, how do we go about solving questions like this, okay? The first thing we want to do is we want to draw our free body diagram down here, all right? And like, like you know, we would solve any kind of beam problem, all right, is we're going to go ahead and we're going to solve the, uh, solve for the reactions, okay? So at point C, all right, we have, we have a roller pin here, okay? So it's allowing movement in X, which means we only have a Y. We have our external force here of 4 kilonewton. Okay, we have A at point D, and this, let's just label these here. So we have B, we have C and A. Okay, and at point D we have a 3 kilonewton force, and at point A we have two reactions, right? We have our AY and our AX. Okay, because there's no roller here, that's a rigid support here. Okay, so it's resisting motion in the X and the Y direction. Okay, cool. So now that we've drawn our free body diagram, we can go ahead and that's 1.5 meters. Okay, that's 2 meters, 2 meters, and what else? What other information do we have? That's, that's pretty much all we're given. So um, with, with that being said, let's go ahead and let's start to solve for the reactions, okay? And we have enough information that we can do that. And how do we do that? Well, you know, don't be, don't be um, alarmed by taking the moments or anything, it, it's not really that hard, okay? It's just, uh, you just need to be able to carefully indicate the, the distance to the perpendicular forces, okay? So it's, it's exactly the same as doing it in a beam, okay? Except now we're just working in another plane. We're working in a Y plane and an X plane when we take our reactions. So let's go ahead and let's take the reactions for uh, around point A, okay? So let's start out by taking the moment about A and we'll say that, you know, um, counterclockwise is positive like we always do and it's really important now to like you know use your sign conventions like this don't be lazy and not and not write those in because now that we're kind of working all over the place it's important to be able to visualize which direction um, moments are, are, are acting in okay because that's where you can kind of make a mistake here so let's start with and this is 1.5 there okay let's start with point D okay so we have a 3 kilonewton force and it's uh, it's 1.5 meters from A in the vertical direction, okay? So that's 1.5 meters and we have 3 kilonewtons, so, and it's acting in the clockwise direction, okay? So it's going to be negative. So we have 3 kilonewton, okay? That's going to be multiplied by 1.5 meters. Very good. We have a 4 kilonewton force that is also acting in the clockwise direction and it is 2 meters from A, right? So. That is going to be negative again. We have 4 kilonewton times 2 meters. 
Okay, and then CY we have in the positive direction, right? And that is going to be four meters, right, from A. So we have C, all right, CY first, four meters, that's equal to zero. Okay, I'm going to write a little bit smaller because this is maybe going to be a longer question. I, I want to save space. So if we go ahead and we calculate that, okay, we should end up with CY being equal to 3.125 Okay. If you want to do that on your own, go ahead, feel free, just solve for CY there. All right, perfect. So what do we have next? Well, we found uh, our CY reaction. Let's go ahead and let's take some of the forces in the X direction where we're going to denote right, the right direction is our positive. Okay, and as you can see, we have a three kilonewton force here. We have our, we've assumed our direction, oops, sorry. I, just confuse those, my apologies. And we have our AX here, okay? And we've also assumed AX to be in the right direction, this way, okay? Now, I wanted to show you this for a reason, okay? Is whenever you have uh, pin supports here in a truss system, what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna need to assume a direction, okay? So when we wrote our, our free body diagram here, sorry I confused the letters, I apologize. Um, but we need to assume a direction, okay? So for AX, we assumed that the direction was going to be in the right direction, all right? Now, if you look at the forces, sometimes you can guess the right direction, but for this case, I just wanted to show you that we assumed the right way, or in the right direction, but if we look at what we get for the summation of the forces in uh, X, okay, we're gonna get X, AX is equal to negative three kilonewton, okay? Well, what does that mean? Well. That means that we assume the incorrect direction for x. So we're going to need to go to our free body diagram, okay? And we're going to need to correct that and show that ax is actually, so ay is this way, okay? And ax is actually in the left direction, okay? So that's an important kind of thing to realize. So that's actually gonna be positive there, okay? So we're just gonna say ax is three kilonewton now that we've corrected it on our, on our free body diagram. Perfect, so let's go ahead and find the summation of forces in the y direction. So we have AY, which is upwards. Okay, we have four kilonewton force downward. And we have CY, which is 3.125 upward. It's all equal to zero. Okay, and that means that AY is going to be equal to 0 0.875 kilonewton. All right, so we've found the reactions. So, what do we need to do now? So, there are two different ways of solving a truss question, okay? There's the joint method, okay? And then there's the method in which we're gonna make a cut and we're going to uh, kind of sh make a shortcut in a, in a sense. And we're going to do the joint method first, okay? Because that's kind of the basic way. So, later on, we're gonna show you the cutting method, the, the shortcut method that um, you, you're probably gonna wanna use during the exam because it's way easier and you're gonna make less mistakes, but you do need to know the joint method to just see how it works, okay? So, we need to analyze each joint within the system, okay? So let's go ahead and we'll start at joint C, okay? So let's go ahead and start at joint C, all right? And I'm just gonna show you how we do this, okay? So let's separate this. Okay, so method of joints. We're starting at joint C. So for each joint, what we're going to do is we're going to draw a little plane, okay? So this is joint C. All right, and what we're going to do is we're going to draw all of the forces acting on joint C at this point, okay? So what we have, okay, as well as we have a 1.52 and a 2.5 triangle, okay? So what that means is if you multiply all those by two, you see that you have a three, four, five triangle, right? And that's gonna help us kind of uh, do this problem a little bit faster. Okay, so right here, all right, I'll just draw this in red, I guess. Uh, I'll draw it in green, okay? Okay, is we have CY, okay? So at joint C, this is, remember, we're at point C, okay? So we have CY here, that's equal to 3.125 kilonewton, okay? And we have a, what else do we have? Well, we have our force BC here, okay? And when we draw our members, okay, our, our truss members, we're always gonna assume that they're in tension. So they're always 
out, acting outwards, okay? And then if our answer is negative, we'll, we'll adjust it, okay? But we're always gonna act as if when the, uh, the, the trust members are in tension, okay? That's the best way to do it. The easiest way to make less mistakes. Okay, so this is, we're gonna call that force BC. And we have uh, force CD here, okay? And we are going to draw that like this, force CD. Okay, so that is the free body diagram of our joint C, all right, and we know that this is a three, four, five triangle, all right. And all we need to do from this point, okay, so we've assumed that all of our directions are in tension, and we're just gonna take the summation of the forces, okay, so let's start with the summation of the forces in the Y direction, all right, and as you can see, okay, kind of intuitively, right, this is probably in the wrong direction, right? Because they're, both forces are acting up. But that's fine, we can go ahead and we can change it after, all right? Um, so we can go ahead and say that at F, uh, the, the sum of the forces in the y direction, okay? We can say we have F, C, D, and we're gonna multiply that by three over five, right? Okay, plus 3.125 kilonewton, okay? And that's equal to zero. All right, so that gives us that FCD, okay, is equal to negative 5.21 kilonewton. Now, see how we have a negative here, right? That tells us that the direction that we chose for FCD is wrong, okay? So FCD is actually acting in this direction, okay? So we need to go ahead and we need to just change that, and we'll cross that out, and that's it, simple as that, right? So FCD is in, uh, negative, okay, so now uh, FCD is positive, right, because we've, we've changed that in our free body diagram, okay, and it's in compression, all right. Now, let's go ahead and let's take the summation of the forces in the X direction, and sorry for this little piece of paper, guys, we had a camera issue, so we just restarted the video, and let's go ahead and take the forces in the X, so we have FB, FBC here, right, and that's in the negative direction, so we have FBC, plus we have FCD, right? FCD is 5.21, and that is in the positive direction, like I said, and we are going to multiply that by four over five. Very good, and that's going to be equal to zero, so we get that FBC is equal to 4.17 kilonewton. Okay, and because it's going that we got a positive uh, answer there, okay, so that means that the tension direction that we assumed FBC to be in is correct. So we can say that that's in tension. All right, so we're done our first joint, okay? And as you can see, this this joint method um, can be quite tricky, and there's you know there's a lot of arithmetic involved and taking forces and, and directions, and it's pretty easy to get wrong on a test. So it's something that you really need to practice, okay? So let's go ahead and analyze the next joint. And which joint was that gonna be? Well, let's go ahead and analyze um, joint A. Okay, so joint A will be next. And well, let's take a look at what we have at joint A. So we have joint A here. We have our AY, right? We already know what that is. That's 0.875. We have AX, right? AX is in this direction, and it's 0 0.8, sorry, that's three. That's kilonewton, very good. And well, what do we have? We have our AB force right here, right? FAB, we don't know what that is yet. And we have our FAD, which is in this direction here. And once again, we have a three, four, five triangle which is helpful for us. Perfect, okay. So let me just go ahead and make these, give these a little bit of green here, just so we kind of can see where those forces are. Okay, so the, the, the trick, I guess, in this joint method, all right, is to select the joint in which you have enough uh, information to solve the question or to solve for your forces initially, okay? And from that information, you can kind of go forward. Because if you pick the wrong place to analyze, okay, you're gonna have too many unknowns and not enough equations, you're not gonna be able to solve it. So that's part of the trick, is knowing where to start, and that just comes with practice. So let's go ahead and let's start. 
So let's analyze the forces in the y direction. Okay. Fy, we'll say up is positive. All right, we have, what do we have here? Well, we have 0 0.875 up, and we have FAD, okay, and 3 over 5, right? That's equal to 0. So we have FAD is equal to negative 1.46, okay, kilonewton. Now, once again, we've assumed the wrong direction. That's fine, okay? All we need to do, okay, is change the direction. Okay, so F and, well, we'll just say that's positive, okay, and it's in compression now. Perfect. All right, so, well, what do we need to do next? <clears throat> Let's go ahead and take the forces in the X direction, just like we did before. All right, we have FAB, right? And we've assumed that to be a positive direction. Okay, we have minus three kilonewton. And we also have our FAD, which is also in the negative direction. And that's 1.46 times four over five equals zero. Moving both those negatives to the other side, we get a positive, okay, we get positive 4.17 kilonewton. So you'll see, and that's intention, okay? So it doesn't matter which direction, left or right, that internal forces are going. All that matters is the, the positive or negative just means it's go, either it's going away in tension, away in tension, or it's going uh, towards the origin in compression, okay? So right or left doesn't necessarily matter. It just means if it's going compressing or if it's in tension. What you'll also notice, okay, is that these two forces were the same, okay? We had 4.17 kilonewton for this force here, BC, and we had 4.17 kilonewton for this force here, okay? And the reason for that is if you were to look at joint B, you'd see that there's only two forces in the X direction, okay? So this force must equal this force, right? That just makes sense. That's just physics. That's just basic math. So what do we do now? So we found FAD, we found FAB, Okay, we found FCD, and the last force that we need to find, okay, is FBD. All right, so let's go ahead, and I know this is, we're running out of space here. Let's come up all the way up here. Let's draw an arrow here. And let's finally do joint B. And that's going to be the end of the question, okay? So I know this is a long question, but we're almost done. Okay, so at joint B, we have our plane, all right, we have a four kilonewton force down, all right, and we have, what do we have up here, okay, well, we have a FBD, okay, so we have FBD up and four kilonewton down, so I'm not, I'm not even going to write these forces here. And we, we could like this, but they just cancel each other out, uh, essentially, and they don't uh, really affect the y direction because they're both in the x. And the only thing we need to find is this force now, so we're good. So let's just find the forces in the y. Okay, and as you can see, FBD minus 4 equals 0, so FBD is 4 kilonewton. And that is upwards. So that is in tension. Okay, it's away. It's moving away. Okay, so that's it. We found everything. We found all the, all the members, uh, all their internal forces. Okay. And once you do that, that's that's it. We're done the question. Okay, so we found we we calculated the internal forces of each of the members of the truss. Okay, we did it by the method of joints. Come back for another video on trusses. We are going to do the method of uh, sections. So we're going to cut sections and it's going to be a lot easier. Uh, thanks for watching guys. Like and subscribe if you enjoyed the video.